this in a hot wax about 40, 45 seconds, because I will be putting it in, 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 into the core can, so it has to be somewhat soft on the outside of it, so it'll be in. Then we're going to use these two instruments right here to carve the can. Not heated. When it comes out of the dipping process, the can is going to be solid because the water will the name? solidify it. Karen. Karen. Yes. And what color? Really, really warm and soft. Then I have about 12 minutes to carve it. Uh, at the end of 12 minutes, we're going to stiffen up to the point you can't work on anymore. And the number? Just continue to dip it. Now watch, it goes hot wax, cold Thank water. You. <laughs> Do you know how to display it? One layer of hot wax, or it'll accept the next coat of wax. So there's no Gives us the no. opportunity to add it. You put it all the way on the head, and then trim the wick, the stem off, with stem to outside. The other trim candle made with your own color. So you might want to make sure you get a business card. You can order them, have them shipped directly to you. And or when you come back out to the festival, come see me earlier in the day, place that order, and you can have one made in your cars at no extra charge. Okay? I always do this really fast. Yeah. So I have the time to do this. You do it fast, these people are going to get bored. No. Oh no, you're getting bored. Indeed, yes. You know how it is when you get bored? Oh yeah, I go to sleep. Sit down and take a nap. We're going to make one candle so they can see the process from start to finish. It takes about 15 minutes, my lord. That is if I get him to work steadily. But then again, he's family, so I have trouble. I can't eat him. And you know, obviously, I don't starve him to death, that's for sure. Isn't that right, Griff? Huh? The Griffinator. You know, it's annoying because we have Gryffindor candles, and every time someone says Gryffindor, Gryffindor I uh, go, what? We like Slytherin. Yeah, I'm going to say Slytherin. Gryffindor. Someone told me that my character has me being a Hufflepuff. You're a Hufflepuff. I'm a Hufflepuff. Definitely I'm a not Raven of all four houses. It all depends on the time of day. <laughs> <laughs> all but Ravenclaw. That's all I'm going to say. And See, I you just you keep changing colors. Seven. And wait. We don't have a hunter green. No, nope, you do the regular blue, blue greens. <laughs> so, you mean yellow for put, put the clear on top of the turquoise? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you put a white, uh, you put a, take it a hot dip yellow on top of that. Then you go a regular clear, another hot dip turquoise. Hot dip turquoise. Three clear. Don't sling it, please. It's only the umpteenth time I've asked you not to do that. See the Royal Candlemaker? There you go. Nice and smooth. You see the Royal Candlemaker? Please go in and say hello. I'm just learning from what I'm watching. Oh, come on, look, you gotta go to the belly dancer. Hey, you got the three clears. Is that the third clear there? Put the blue. One white. So you didn't get <laughs> Put a second white on it. We want a fuchsia pink all the way to the top. Okay. And we want a purple, purple, three fourths of the way up. Now it changed. Three fourths of the way up, purple. And a fuchsia pink all the way to the top. You do a purple halfway up. Okay, then an acusia pink all the way to the top. <laughs> and a, a quarter of the way up, a purple. 
then a fuchsia all the way to the top. And hand it to me. Thank you. You timed it perfectly. Here's Magic Carbon. Just about ready to carve it. All the colors are now on the inside of the candle in layers. The wax is solid, but very warm and soft. We're going to take a kitchen knife, slice into it, taking a cross section of those internal layers, and we're going to turn them inside out so you're basically going to be looking at the grain of the wax. The wax is really hot. Start putting the design on the candle by hand, and we work our way up the candle very slowly until we get all the design on it. We're going to do a little butterfly design on this one here. First set of carvings are going to represent the lower set of butterfly wings. Any combination of colors that you might choose to go on your own personal candle, we're pretty much capable of putting them on a candle for thee. This is going to be the upper set of wings on the butterfly. That size candle is $35, my lady, and they are all unscented in original form. Found too many people had allergies to fragrances, but they are refillable candles, so if you wanted to have a nice smell in the future, you're welcome to refill them and make them whatever fragrance you like the best. Upper wings of the butterfly. All right, there's the butterfly right there. Now we're going to use this tool. Normally I use this tool to make this design right here. But I'm just going to take a little piece of wax, cut it, and fold it over. That's going to look like what we represent the body of the butterfly. Reach in the side of the candle, cut out a strip of wax right here. Cut it out right here. Cut it out right here. Then we go back and grasp each one and gently fold it over. Kind of pull it out like that. There's the body of the butterfly. Some people say they look kind of like an iris as well. And there's how you carve the candle right there. what the wax feels like over yeah. Very warm, very soft and flexible. It depends on the temperature and the area where you're wearing. Do be careful with them, young Today, ones. About 12 to 14 minutes. On colder days, you can get it down to the 5 to 7 minute range. Right. If it gets really cold, you just don't make it. <laughs> Not fast enough to do it. But how much heat can the candles tolerate? That's the question. But see, most decorative candles do not tolerate being in your house for any length of time with the AC turned off, like you're on vacation, you're saving on electricity. They melt and disfigure. That's why they're made out of our lowest melting point waxes those companies can buy. Mine are much higher melting point waxes, so you can put this candle in any room all summer long with no air conditioner on and it won't hurt it at all. If it does, you can bring it back to me, I'll replace it. The only ones that I have that I want you to protect from those conditions are the skinny tapers. Those need to be protected. So what do you think? Interesting art form. My pleasure to show you how they're made, ladies. I'm sorry? I do. You know why? Because the paraffin wax is made out of oil. If I do not coat it with something that's not oil-based, I would have sold you the biggest dirt bag that you'll ever own in your house. Give it six months to a year, two years, the candle is going to collect dust particles of such amount that it's going to make the candle ugly can't clean it off because it's already penetrated the oily surface. All you do is push the dirt deeper into it, more oil comes out on the outside of it, it collects another way. That means most people are actually happy when their candles melt when they burn them. Because now they can keep fresh, clean, pretty ones that have to put out in their place. Well, these are not are going to burn up. They refill. So it's my job to make them where they're going to be real pretty and keep them clean. Put my glasses back on so I can see what I'm doing. A little bit of water top the top of that. We take the candle once it's been carved. Who did not get to see what the wax feels like? Everybody get to see what it feels like? Indeed then. We have one last piece of hot wax right here. 
We're going to take this book, we're going to get it out of the way. Now we're going to take the candle, make sure everything's where I put it. And we're going to immerse the candle back into the hot clear paraffin. Very quick, brief dip. Just like this. Right back in the hot wax. Pull it out, don't leave it in there, it starts to melt it. And then instead of putting it into the water like we did to form the layers, it goes into an industrial grade liquid wax, which is a liquid form at room temperature. It's actually an air dry wax. And when it gets nice and dry, any dust that settles on that tin, you can clean off with a feather duster or soft cloth really easily. Under no circumstances should you ever wash them. Any questions? Refillable candles have actually been in existence for over 65 years. I did not know about them until 34 years ago. I moved to a small town in the hill country of Texas and I walked into a candle shop. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like this before and it only took me about 10 seconds to tell the lady straight in her face. Who in their right mind would burn these things? They're way too pretty. And then she said, and responded to me like I didn't expect to. Well, sir, these are actually refillable candles. What do you mean by a refillable candle? It's all wax, got a wick in the middle of it that burns. How do you keep the whole thing from melting away? She said, it's real easy. Control how hot they burn. That's what I learned. There's different size wicks available for different candle applications. Most candles you're buying actually have a large wick in them with your intention. As you see, most people know that you expect them to melt. It behooves them to make them melt completely and quickly. Then you'll come back more often and replace them and never think about the money you're watching burn up on each individual candle. Because you see, I've never had lots of discretionary money in my life. Every dollar I have has to have a way to spend. It's got to have a purpose. So I would never buy a candle just to have it sit around and be a little trick. My wife, my wife. If you can't burn a candle, there's no reason to own it. It's got to go away completely and quickly. And you